So which of these graphs, A, B, C, or D, is the best match for this equation, y equals a quantity x minus 3 squared plus 1, based on the vertex alone? Let me know your answer in the comments. I'll let you know how you did. Go ahead and try it now, seriously. All right, now this is a lesson about the vertex, and it's part of our series on quadratic equations. We're going to have at least three lessons on the vertex alone, so it's a really important topic. Now, be sure, if you are a student, to pause the video, grab the guided notes. It takes this experience of watching a video and makes it an active experience. And, of course, we don't learn passively. We learn when we do stuff. So this is going to structure the video so that you can learn every little thing that is intended for you to be learned. And it's going to record it in a way that you can, well, reference it in the future. Now, the goal of this lesson is to learn how to find the vertex, the coordinate of the vertex, x comma y, from any quadratic equation written in vertex form. And of course, that means that you should already be, fam be familiar with what vertex form is. If you're not there, no big deal. That's actually a pretty simple grab. I'll put a link in the description. I would highly recommend that if you're not 100% sure of what vertex form is, pause the video, watch that lesson on the vertex form so that you know what it means when I say a x minus h squared plus k, because that's what vertex form is. We'll talk about it here in just a minute, but you should be up to speed on that before you start this lesson. All right, so let's take a look at what we started with. Uh, at the top of your notes, you've got a, b, c, d, same graphs, and you've got a place to write the equations right there, and we're going to match those with this. All right, so let's start with a. a, the equation that this graph is, is y equals negative 2 x plus 3 squared plus 1. Uh, a, the leading coefficient a, is a negative 2. We don't have a clue from this graph, from this equation right here, what a is. Here a is negative and the graph opens downward. Look at d and c and b. In all of those, the graph opens upward. Uh, that's kind of interesting. So we do know, we did learn earlier that if A is positive, the graph opens upward, like B, C, and D. And if A is negative, the graph opens downward, like here in graph A. But this graph, this equation, doesn't quite match. Do you see? X plus 3, and this one says X minus 3. The plus 1s work. And of course, A could be anything, so negative 2. That's not a problem. Um, so that means that this vertex, negative 3 comma 1, doesn't quite match, but it's really, really close. Look at that. One and then negative three. Huh. That's interesting, but it's not the same thing. So it looks like the vertex would work. Negative three comma one, negative three comma one. If these numbers here happen to like make the vertex or we could read the vertex from them, those seem to work. But this graph comes from this equation right here, and that doesn't match. Huh, that's kind of interesting. That could be a little confusing. Let's check out equations or graph C. 2x minus 3 squared minus 1. So here the negative 3s match. But here it's a negative 1 and a positive 1. So those don't match. Now let's look at the vertex for this. It says 3, negative 1. 3, negative 1. So negative 1 is the same. And in graph A, positive 1 was the same. But look at the 3s. Here it's a plus 3, but the coordinate of the, the x-coordinate of the vertex was the opposite. Same deal here, x minus 3, but then look at the x-coordinate. It's a positive 3. Here it's a negative 3. That's kind of strange. Let's look at equation D. It says y equals 2, x plus 3 squared plus 1. Well, that's exactly the same except for the 2 as graph A. See, this one has a positive 2. It opens up. Here at A, it has a negative 2. It opens down. And let's see if this matches our original equation, or the ones we're trying to match it up with. Um, here, a x minus 3 squared plus 1. Here, 2, that's fine. x plus 3 squared plus 1. So that's not quite right. The, the 1s match, but the 3s are opposite. Hmm. But look at this. 3, negative 3, 1, 1. The 1s match, the 3s don't. So it's not a, it's not, not c, it's not d. Maybe it's b. Y equals 2, X minus 3 squared plus 1. So the A is fine. That could be anything. X minus 3 squared, X minus 3 squared. And then over here, plus 1, plus 1. So B is the answer. And look at the vertex. 3, 1. 
Well, that's interesting. It's like the opposite sign of that number in the parentheses, the H value. The K at the end matches perfect. B is correct. Hmm. So what we are going to show you, just so you're 100% clear, I'm going to show you in this video, how do you find the vertex of a quadratic equation that's written in vertex form? Vertex form, again, in case you forgot, y equals a x minus h squared plus k. And I'm going to show you how to find that vertex, x comma y, from just looking at it. Pretty cool. Now, if you're doing the guided notes, that's what you're going to write right here for your goal, right? Okay, so let's try the next one. Let's see if you can get this one right. So based on this graph, y equals x plus 1 squared minus 1, which of these, well, in this equation, which of these graphs matches this equation, y equals a times x plus 1 squared minus 1? Go ahead and leave me your answer in the comment, and I'll let you know how you're doing. All right. Now this is at the bottom of the page right here, and you've got a place once again to write all of your equations. So let's take a look and see which one of these matches. All right. First one, graph A, is the equation is y equals negative x plus 1 squared minus 1. So A equals x plus 1 squared minus 1. Oh, look at that. So negative A, it could be a negative. It doesn't matter. There's nothing, nothing here that tells us what A is except for a number. It's the leading coefficient. Now, that's interesting. This one, A is negative. It's going down. The parabola is opening downward. Same with C and B. So I know that for A, C, and B, the leading coefficient is going to be a negative, whereas D, the leading coefficient is going to be a positive. And I know that because for this parabola here in D, the parabola is opening up, and for the others, the parabola is opening down. All right, so A matches. Let's go ahead and take a look at the others, though. X, let's see, Y equals negative quantity X minus 1 squared minus 1. So this one doesn't quite match because this H value right here uh, opposite sign. The k values match. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at d. y equals parentheses x plus 1 squared minus 1. So this one, let's see, a, oh, a could be 1. x plus, that matches. Look at that, that one. So this could be a or it could be d. Let's take a look at, at graph b. The equation for graph B is y equals negative quantity x minus 1 squared plus 1. That doesn't match. The signs are totally backwards here. We have a plus 1 for x minus h, and here for the equation for B, x minus 1. So that's backwards, and the, and the k is backwards as well, because here it's minus 1, and over here it's plus 1. So the answer is actually A and D. Both of those work. Oh, that's really interesting. Yep. Huh. All right. Now, I hope you're 100% sure that you know that these equations are written in vertex form, right? Now, the reason it's called vertex form, and we're on page two, just in case you're following along with the notes, the reason it's called vertex form is because you can actually just read the coordinate of the vertex right from the equation. So right from the form y equals a x minus h squared plus k, you can read the vertex. It's h comma k. That's what I'm going to show you how that works right now. And a, of course, shows you the direction. All right. So the k value, that's going to be really, really key. What does that k value do for you, right? So which part of the vertex, the x or the y, does k tell you? Can you tell? Do you know already? Well, k tells you the y-coordinate of the vertex. Do you see? Negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. Here, k is negative 1, and the y-coordinate of the vertex is negative 1. Here, k, so it's y equals a to x minus h, which is negative 3, squared plus k. You see, k is the y-coordinate of the vertex. Now, in your guided notes, there's a spot right there for you to record this. I'd highly recommend that you do just that, y-coordinate of the vertex. You can see that just from that last value right there, k. It's the same thing, so that's pretty cool. All right, so now I've got six equations right here just to make sure you got that. Go ahead and write down the y-coordinate of each of these equations that are written in vertex form. So write down the y-coordinate of the vertex for each of those. 
go ahead and try it right now. You've got it in your guided notes. If not, and you're just watching, can you think about what they all are, especially this one? What is it? All right, we're going to dive into it now. So you ready? All right. First one, X. We don't know. We didn't talk about what X is yet, but it's X comma 5. For right here, the next and the one after that is negative 5, so x comma negative 5. The coordinate of the vertex would be x negative 5. And now the coordinate of the vertex would be x1. The tricky one, it's 0. The y coordinate of this vertex is 0. So we have some number for x comma 0. There's no number written here, so it's plus 0. There we go. And then hopefully by now you're rock solid, x plus 6, and then x minus 6. These would be all of the y coordinates of the vertex for each of these equations. Now, of course, what about the x coordinate, right? How does h tell you what the x coordinate is of the vertex? So let's dive into that one a little carefully because this is where it does get a little tricky. So I've got a graph right here. Its equation is y equals negative x plus 1 squared minus 1. That's its equation. Its vertex is negative 1 comma negative 1. Well, we see how k, the last number, right here, negative 1, is the y-coordinate of the vertex. But the h is kind of kind of crazy. Look at that. Here, the x-coordinate is negative 1, but we have a positive 1 right here. So it's like the opposite sign. Let's look at another example. Same exact deal. Now here, the graph is opening up, so I know a is positive. The k-coordinate, or the k-value is negative 1, so the y-coordinate of the vertex is negative 1. The h, x plus 1, and look at the x-coordinate of the vertex. It's the opposite sign. Let's see another one right here. Uh, y equals 2, quantity x minus 3 squared plus 1. So the 2 is positive, so the graph's going up. The k in the vertex form is 1, so the y-coordinate of the vertex is 1. And look at this, x minus 3. So the opposite sign of h, the opposite of the sign of h is the x-coordinate of the vertex. And the reason that is, is what we're actually doing is we're trying to figure out what value of x would make this thing in the whole parentheses right there equal to 0. That's why it is the opposite sign. Now, on your guided notes, you see right here it says, how does h tell you about the x-coordinate of the vertex? There's a place to write that right there. And then it says go back to the x-coordinate, or go and fill in the x-coordinate of the vertex in the table above. We're going to do that in our, in our video right here. But the x-coordinate is the opposite of the sine of h. Pretty cool. All right, so now let's practice this, see if we can get it right. I've got three equations right here. It's in the table in your guided notes. You've got six of them up, up there. Let's do the first three carefully. Check in. Make sure we're good before we dive into the last three. So go ahead and write the entire coordinate of the vertex of these three equations written in vertex form. Ready? All right, here we go. We're going to do it together. First one, negative 1, positive 5. Do you see? Opposite of H, K. Opposite of H is the X coordinate, K is the y coordinate. So negative 1, negative 5. How you doing? Are you learning? I hope so. All right, last one. 9, 1. That's pretty cool, right? So the opposite of this number that's in the parentheses, that's the x coordinate of the vertex. So the y coordinate is this one. That's pretty cool. Now the vertex, of course, is where the whole graph turns around. So this one's going up. So this would be a minimum. All three of these graphs are going up. All right, let's talk about the next three. Let's try these right here. So go ahead and try this in your notes. You got that guided notes right there. Try to write the coordinate for each vertex for each of these equations that is written in vertex form. Ready? We're going to do it right now. All right. So the first one we knew from a minute ago that the y coordinate was zero and the x coordinate is positive six. Ah, pretty cool. And then the next one, two comma six. And the last one, do you see? negative 2, negative 6. So the k value stays exactly the same, but the h value, it's the opposite sign, is the x-coordinate of the vertex. That's the trickiest part. So how did you do? Are you having a tough time? Or maybe you got it, not quite sure. Are you doing pretty good? Or are you excellent? Let's practice so that no matter where you're at, you can move to be at this direction right here. Now, if you're doing very bad, you're going to need some help. 
Like you're going to need a little help to kind of guide you through, get you started. But no matter what, by doing the practice correctly, you're going to be moving towards this excellent. That's where we want to be. So I've got some practice you can see on the screen right now. And each of these, uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six graphs, one, two, three, four, five, six equations. We've got a place for you to match the graph to the equation, to write down the sine of A, and write down the vertex of each of these and match them up. So I think that's really good practice. That's exactly the stuff we did in this lesson. Hey, if you did learn this lesson really well and you're feeling pretty good about it, I really would like to hear from you. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Stay tuned for other stuff. You're a, you're a math teacher. Hey, I've got a weekly problem. My sub stack's pretty fun. We do them just for fun. Bring some excitement back into math for you as a teacher. And if you're a teacher also, I've got all kinds of lessons like this one available on my Teachers Pay Teachers site as well as my website on teachingmath.org. Until next time, hope you have a great day.